Hi everyone and welcome back to The Rooftop, the home of good news worth shouting about, where we share positive stories about issues that matter and campaigns that make a difference. I'm Tom York and this is episode 7 of Rooftop TV. Now, for our first story, with social distancing and quarantine measures still in place across the country, the idea of participating in a 2000 kilometer group walking challenge might sound a little off limits. But thanks to the wonders of modern technology, that's exactly what staff and students at a college in Hereford have been doing this month, and all for a very important cause. Now, I'm pleased to welcome back Simon Francis. Simon is the editor of The Rooftop, and he's got more details about the story. Hi, Simon. Hi, Tom. Thanks, and good to be back. Um, yeah, so this story is um, a bunch of uh, students and staff at the Royal National College for the Blind in uh, Hereford, and they've been taking part in a, uh, a virtual um, fundraising event. Now, um, they started off by thinking, well, let's see if we can use up our daily walking, running, cycling allowances that we've been allowed over the last um, sort of few weeks and months um, to see if we could you know, do the equivalent of walking to our, our exchange, uh, their exchange college in, uh, in Lyon in France. Um, but they got there um, really easily, really quickly. Uh, so they basically pushed on uh, to Madrid. They set themselves a new target to get as far as Madrid. So they've basically every day just been doing their, their daily exercise and totting up the, the numbers and fundraising for um, kind of, you know, their own college. Now, um, the college itself is, is one of the, the only places in the whole country where um, blind and visually impaired young people can go and get a, a really intensive and, and really great um, education. Um, obviously, all colleges, universities, uh, charities are all facing problems at the moment in terms of funding and fundraising. Um, so this is a really great way of still being able to do some fundraising activity um, for the college, but in a in a in a lockdown safe uh, scenario. So um, good luck to the students. They're still fundraising. They're still walking every day. Um, so you can read more about the story on our website, and then you can find out how to donate. That's fantastic. Thanks, Simon. Really great work from the. Royal National College for the Blind over in Hereford. Now, for our next story, in a previous episode, we spoke about a community interest company that is helping to support vulnerable people by providing free laptops and tablets to those who need them the most. So the elderly, homeless people and refugees, for example, all with the aim of ensuring that they, just like the rest of us, can access vital services, contact loved ones, buy essential items, and access online activities that are really important, especially in the current situation. The company, socialbox.biz, works with private organizations to source old or unused IT equipment, which it then distributes to those in need, working in partnership with charities, like Age UK and the Refugee Support Network. Now, I'm pleased to welcome to the rooftop Madhani Kuflu. Madhani is one of the recipients uh, of a laptop that was sourced by socialbox.biz. Hi, Madhani. Hi, Tom. Hi, thanks for joining us. Um, Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Uh, firstly, just wanted to ask how are you and, and how are you coping in the, the current situation? Oh, as we all know, the current situation is quite, um, quite hard. I can say, I mean, like, especially I was, I was homeless and I don't know what to do, but they, uh, the government uh, managed to put us in hotels as an em emergency to, to be safe. So uh, I'm okay and I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah. So what have you been using your laptop for that socialbox.biz have, have given to you, Madhani? Yes, yeah. Um, first, um, housing, I mean, accommodations. Even though the charities and the councils are trying to help us by looking for places, we are expected to look for places and um, tell to the charity or to the council, and then the council and the charity, they will do their own thing. I mean, like about the payment, and uh, the agreement 
So um, it's, it's, it is really helpful to have the laptops because most of the people, most of, I mean, like I can say all of us, we, we can't afford it. We can't buy a laptop. And if you go to any offices, even uh, to do something else apart from housing, uh, to find to, to look for a job or any training, they ask you, you have to go online, you have to do this and that. So if you don't have a laptop, uh, you'll be left alone. So it was really, really, really important. And um, I, I really, I was glad when they said, okay, the laptops are coming. I said, wow, <laughs> it, was, it was like my, my dream. That's really great to hear. What would you say to companies and businesses out there who um, perhaps have spare or unused or old uh, laptops or tablets? Uh, what would you say to them to really encourage them to, to donate their old or unused tech to socialbox.biz? Yes, yeah. Um, their donation brings people to life. I mean, like, we can't really live without IT or computers. So if someone doesn't have access to IT or computers, it means like they will struggle and they can't find the way out because, you know, when you're homeless, you come from a very, you know, like from very critical situation, socially, economically, and everything is like, at its, at, its, at its very end, you know, like you can't, you, you can't even have a place to live. So you are, you are broke. So the donation is very, very important. Let me say it again. Yeah, I have to say yeah, thank you for their donations. And uh, it is very important, as I mentioned there. Yeah. I think you really hit the nail on the head there with the times that we're living in. Everybody should have access to IT and equipment. It's essential. So thank you, Madhani, for joining us. We wish you all the very best. Thanks once again. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Now here for our final story. Over to you, Simon. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, so um, the last story, again, is another fundraising story. Again, like, you know, as I mentioned, lots of charities having to think very differently about how they fundraise and, and how they continue to provide um, vital services. And, and this is a charity in Leeds that works with homeless people, Simon on the Streets. And um, they normally do sleep outs, um, you know, where people go and sleep out for the night and, and sort of experience what it's like to be homeless and, and, and be sponsored uh, for that. Obviously, that's not, not possible at the moment. Um, so instead they've been asking people to do a sleep in. So families right across Yorkshire have been sleeping in, uh, having setting up tents in their in their gardens, in their living rooms, um, you know, creating dens in, in their with their sofas, that sort of thing. And, and just a really nice uh, fun way to sort of raise money. And they've raised over ten thousand um, pounds just in the uh, the last uh, the last couple of weeks. So again, you know, another really good way of how charities are, are thinking differently about how they can still fundraise and, and make it safe for people to do so during lockdown. That's great. Really important work there. So uh, well done to Simon on the street. Um, very positive. Well, that's almost all we've got time for this week. You can find out more about all of today's stories and the other positive news this week on our website, therooftop.news, and on Facebook and Instagram at News from the Rooftop. And of course, on Twitter at News from Rooftop. And as always, if you've got a story that you want to shout from the rooftop about, email it to us at editor at the rooftop dot news. Well, that really is all we've got time for. I'm Tom York, and this is The Rooftop, the home of good news worth shouting about. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.